Hi and welcome back to South African Home Sitter. So today we are going to be showing you what is, has been happening in the garden, how we have started preparing for um, spring. So what we've done is we have um, made nine beds here. So these beds uh, will be used for things such as the pumpkins and the watermelons and um, everything that needs a lot of space will be planting in these beds. Okay, we'll also be um, utilizing it for, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to be doing the tomatoes, but uh, about four of these beds will be utilized strictly for tomatoes. And we'll be putting up some, hopefully some fencing just to keep um, the tomatoes, because most of the tomatoes that we are going to be planting here is going to be the indeterminate variety, which means that they will be growing uh, all the way up and if they are trellised well then the tomatoes should do a lot better than if they just crawl across the uh, ground um, that way we can prevent disease and we can have our tomatoes growing all season then here we have another nine beds and currently in these beds we have some turnips we have some cabbage, uh, cauliflower, some beet fruit and some cabbage. So that's the cabbage and this is the, the, the cauliflower. And they are not doing, the cauliflower is not doing so well. The cauliflower is not doing well at all. So what we've done here, what we've done here is we have put on some of these rubber bands just to protect the little heads because I've noticed that they they sort of spread out like that and then they go to seed so we haven't had this particular crop has not been a good one although I am making cauliflower food today from the small little ones that I could pick and then these are all my empty beds these are the empty beds so here we had um, potatoes last season we had potatoes in this bed with some of these pepper plants now these pepper plants they're not looking so great at all but you can see we have plenty of peppers on here so but they are small and they uh, when we leave them they do eventually the pepper plants are not doing well so I'm not actually going to be trimming it too much I will be trimming it closer to the time but not too much because that way I will be having um, peppers a lot earlier coming from these plants because they don't look diseased they just the, I think the leaves are just a bit they're curling because it's really cold at night um, we do not get hard frost we get mostly the soft frost and um, so these peppers they will survive people peppers in our area they are um, perennial so we can grow the same plant uh, just protect it a little bit in winter for about three to four years and they will produce um, however, I do grow new plants every season and this year I've grown, I'm um, growing about 24, 20, between 20 and 24 varieties of um, chilies and peppers. I have started seeding and my seeds are slowly starting to come up because I don't have a heat mat so, you know, it's just uh, um, basically dependent on the temperature I, I, um, I do it much different to a lot of the uh, youtubers that I've watched we do not have I'm not using a grow lamp firstly and I'm not using a heat mat what I do do is I seed my um, all my veggie seeds I put it in my sort of salt trays using a um, peat moss mix with perlite as well as a little bit of potting soil I then seed my, my seed trays and I, I I put it outside in the day because we have nice and hot um, days here. The only time that it's really cold is at night. So what we do is we take it out in the morning and we bring it out at night. That way we also don't have to harden it off because the plants is naturally used to um, germinating and they, they, they basically germinate outside. And um, as you would if you had to plant it in ground the only thing is 
that we have it in the salt tray so that we can protect it at night and bring it inside. So that is what I do with regards to how I'm germinating this year. And it's the first time I'm doing that. I have not done it before, but it's working because I've had quite a bit of germination as it is already. Now this garden here, this garden is a complete mess. We are still busy cleaning up. This garden will be cleaned up completely. Um, and I think that is going to be the next thing that we are going to be doing. We do need to do a lot of weeding as well in the beds, the nine beds. But this garden, we've started cleaning it up nicely. So we have some coriander or cilantro growing in these three beds. So I use a lot of cilantro or as we know it, um, we use coriander um, or dania. We use the word dania. So we have one two three beds and um because the temperatures are not that hot it's still safe for them to be here because uh, dania has a habit of if it gets too hot then they immediately go to seed so i will be thinking of another plan as we get closer to to summer well spring will still be fine but going into summer this definitely can't be open like this so we're gonna need to give us some protection from the heat this also we planted some cilantro in here but nothing has come up yet um that's a lot of actually it has come up some of it is weeds but mostly the cilantro has come up in here we planted our lettuce this bed we've cleaned up and we have planted the lettuce in here this is still a little egg okay so that's the lettuce this is an egg plant I have trimmed down all my eggplants, but the ones that have egg, and this is because of the weather, I'm just leaving that in the meantime, because we have time. And then this is my guava tree that's doing so well. I have some guavas on here. Here we have some guavas. So I have these guavas, and on the side as well, each branch have guavas on them. And we have ripened two thus far and they are super sweet. They are so delicious. This is another eggplant. I have seeded new eggplants, but this one I have trimmed down. Um, I actually did it yesterday because it's setting new leaves. And so this, I'm hoping that I'm getting a head start on my eggplants by keeping the existing ones because they haven't... Um, completely died they have still been producing all the time so that is why i'm actually trying to just save this and get a head start in the new season and then once again some more now on this side this is a volunteer tomato cherry tomato and i think it was the gardener's delight tomato that i planted here now if you go to the other side of this bed and you can see we have some tomatoes ripening here um, and we actually decided to put it up because this tomato plant decided to self seed and just come up in my Egyptian pink garlic bed now it is shading out a little bit of that side of the garlic but I'm hoping that it gets warm enough as the sun goes over that we get some sun on that side. Now this garlic is not ready because garlic, you need to have one, two, three dead leaves before the garlic is ready. I'll actually wait until the fourth leaf, leaf uh, dies down. By that time, you should know that your garlic cloves should be ready for harvesting. So um, this is my, my, my Egyptian pink garlic. Then I still have my... Um, Ajo Roja garlic here and then then I have my and here you can see some of these leaves are dying down this is actually my porcelain eastern porcelain garlic here and then I have and then I have some uh, elephant garlic over here now I have left these nasturtiums in from last year because I love it. It's a variegated leaf 
and um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to see if I can get some seed because I like the fact that um, these leaves are variegated. These are some garlics that we planted just from cloves that we had there as well as here. And they're not doing so great. I'm not impressed with them. So I'll have to um, see how it comes out. This eggplant I haven't um, trimmed down yet. This is some bachelor boy blue button. It's actually a cornflower. And um, yeah, I planted the seed in spring of last year, but they were just slow in coming out. This is an avocado tree here. And this, this is a grafted tree. So I see it's setting some new leaves here. I mean, just going back to this side, this is the little mango tree that I allowed the mango to ripen on here. It was really delicious, but I shouldn't have done it because it actually stunted the growth a little bit. But I see that we have a whole lot of new growth. And although I want the growth to happen here on top, I'm actually going to leave this for this season, the bottom leaves. And then next year, then I will, once this is spread out a little bit more then I'll get rid of the bottom the, the lower leaves what we've done here is this is the um, Bogan Villa which we have made a trellis for and hopefully this will spread and fill up completely so that we have this nice sort of um, barrier to show that this is where the garden starts and then this is the pathway then moving on to the turnips actually no this is the leeks so these are the leeks that is growing here and then this is actually fennel and then i have dull over on the other side let me start it actually looks like dull but it's actually it smells like dull i don't know perhaps it is dull i might be mistaken this is also coriander now you will notice that i grow a lot of coriander And the reason I grow a lot of coriander is because I do supply um, a butcher because they make the dania sausage with using this coriander. They also sell it in the in the butcher. So um, that is why we focus a lot on the on the coriander, on the cilantro, on the dania. It's all the same thing. It's just different places in the world call it different things. Then we have some spinach you'll see a lot of these little these are um, sort of field flowers they just uh, we live on the west coast um, just west of Cape Town um, in South Africa and these are little flowers that appear every year in spring all over this area I am leaving it for now some of it some of it I am taking out because they do attract a lot of bees and a lot of the pollinators love these flowers so I am leaving it just for now just randomly throughout the garden but I, most of it will will go the spinach not doing great at all in fact my first batches of spinach was really good there's a lot of weeds in here please excuse the weeds we are only a few people who actually work in this garden so it's just myself my husband and I only work until one and then I retire for the day so it's myself my husband and Zach Zacharia and then we have more spinach over here so we mulch we mulch with these because we have pine trees on our on our uh, property we actually use this as mulch and um, it breaks down so nicely and you can see underneath here how nice the soil is it keeps it nice and moist and it also um, makes the soil nice and dark so this bed was just extra um, also didn't do too well um, this bed is going to be cleared out this is um, broccoli in this bed here but as you can see they've all gone to seed and I'm actually I'm actually not going to be saving any of these seed um, 
of these broccoli. I'm just going to clear this out and plant something else. Now, yeah. Here was a little fig tree which we've taken now out. We've taken that fig tree out and we have planted it on the other side, which I'll show you. This is a grapevine, but it's resting. It's winter here, so they will they will it will revive once spring sets in. This is another one, grapevine, and here. And yeah, we planted the one grapevine that was inside the greenhouse. Um, I feel that it just didn't get enough sun over there. This is an avocado pear tree that died. So this we are going to be taking this out and we'll be planting another, I don't know, any type of citrus perhaps I was thinking we can plant in there. And then this is a loquit. It's a loquid tree, it's doing really well. And then these are some canna lilies. So I must trim down, I must trim down all these sort of dead um, stalks and le uh, stalks and flowers so that they can set new, new leaves. This is my little orange tree. And here we have, if you, something's been eating on here, but here I have a few um, blossoms on this tree. I have the same one over there, which I'll show you now. But in the meantime, what I'll show you is, I have some rosemary growing over here. And they smell, one of them, one of them died. That one did not die, so... I don't know what the plan was there. This we planted just to... I knew it was in season. I just planted this just to demarcate the areas off. Because I knew they would grow. But um, not be very productive. But also when we pull it out now before spring. It will loosen up the soil nicely. So I can plant something behind you. And then over here. Um... I keep forgetting the name of this. I have the, the tag inside. This will this will also creep over here. I keep forgetting the name. Anyway. I have a banana. I have a banana tree on the other side of the greenhouse. I actually never show that. But um it has also grown nicely. Then I have a little farm over here. I have a date palm here. We'll clean we'll clean this out here. This is a date palm that I started from seed. I have a video which I will put in the description of how I started these um, date palms from seed. I have a few more that's still in pots and um, they've done really well. Um, I'm quite surprised. I know that they won't be producing uh, any fruit in the next six, seven years. But for me, it's just about the fact that there will be a palm here once they start producing then that's a big plus but it's more about the fact that i don't have to buy all these extra palms i have the, the i have the um patience to actually wait for them to grow and they are growing quite fast if this is one year's growth in from seed then i think they're going to be doing well then we have this So the local name for this is wild banana and in the scientific name is Strelitzia Nikolai. Now I have started, I did a video on starting this from seed. They've got the most beautiful orange and black seeds uh, that were, because I had a big one in my garden at my previous home and I saved a lot of those seeds. So I did start some. And there's, I think, one that is doing quite nicely, that is quite big. So this is Trilitsi Nikolai. I do have a lot more seed, which I do plan on planting um, when I have time. Then,
This is another one of my little date palms that I started. That's another one of the little date palms. And this is also an orange tree. Now, I do realize we haven't been looking after these trees now in winter. So we will be um, loosening the soil around it again. And then uh, we've mulched it for winter. But what we'll do is we'll put some, I'll put some liquid fertilizer on there. And um, something that's organic because I only use organic. And then I will put some of our own compost on here as well. These are this is an apple tree that I started from seed and I did a video on here as well but this is this is, I think this is just because of winter this is just the winter cold so this apple tree is about a meter over a meter actually high and I'm so pleased I think it's about a year and six months easily maybe a little bit more one year eight months that I started this from seed now this might just be a crab apple or it might be a very nice apple so we don't know and that will only start producing once again five to six years the plan here is just to get as many trees in so that we can have a sort of a lush looking food forest etc um this one here is a fig tree this is a fig tree And then I have some tomatoes, also not doing great, but because it's not tomato season. But look here, we do have some, and this this is not good. Blossoming rot, it's not actually that. Because, um, I think it's just because it's been lying on the, on the ground. We only just put it up, I think, a couple of days ago. But here we have some nice ones. And here you can see these, are, they, they, they quite, they don't have anything that is brown or anything. So if that was blossoming rot, then it would have shown up here as well. So, moving on to this side, we have another fig tree that Book has eaten all the leaves off. Book has eaten off all these leaves, so um, we need to just protect this. And then moving further into the orchard area. Oh, another apple tree, sorry. This is another apple tree that I started from seed. Look, I don't know how this is going to be doing, but I'm leaving it. I'm so proud of myself for even just getting to this stage. Um, with an apple seed that um, I, apple tree that I grew from seed so just to even get to this stage and to that stage makes me really happy then moving to this side and uncle does his morning walk my uncle does his morning walk <laughs> so in order for this video not to be too long I decided to cut the video here because I still need to do um, the greenhouse after the section of the garden. And um, yeah, I just didn't want it to be too long. So thank you for watching and I hope that you join me in part two of this garden tour.